I've said it before and I'll say it again, copying another artist can lead to rap beef. A lot of times it winds up being a matter of misunderstanding, however, and things get resolved. How can you ever really tell who originated a style when the opposing sides lie hundreds of miles away? This is Bone Thugs and Harmony versus 3-6 Mafia. This has been a video that some viewers have suggested as the two groups had a versus match that was one of the most controversial ones yet, as we all know about the incident that occurred during it. I watched a live broadcast myself and was surprised by it as well. For those that don't know, stay tuned as I'll be going further into it later on in the video. For now, let's break down why this beef even began and what led up to these situations as usual. The groups first began to form in the late 80s and early 90s with their lineup being fully realized by the mid 90s. Bone Thugs and Harmony started off in the industry as Bone Enterprise, a quartet consisting of Lazy Bone, Busy Bone, Crazy Bone, and Wishbone. Flesh and Bone joined later on after their first album, Faces of Death, was released in 1993, and their name was then changed to Thugs and Harmony, and then Bone Thugs and Harmony when they signed to Ruthless Records that same year. 3 Six Mafia in their original incarnation was DJ Paul and Lord Infamous, who are blood relatives, who were making music together as a duo who formed with Juicy J, who was the DJ and producer at the time, also from Memphis, and were called the Backyard Posse. They then changed their name to Triple Six Mafia. Coops and Nicka then joined, followed by Crunchy Black and Gangsta Boo, and their name was changed to what it is most famously known as, Three Six Mafia. As I mentioned previously, this beef is another one that essentially started over perceived copying of styles. Crazy Bone, in an interview years later, would go on to state that they had received fan mail from someone in Memphis stating that a group from Memphis was dissing them for stealing their style and that the fan had left their phone number and he called her as she played the song in question for him over the phone. He would also go on to state that while being on tour of Easy e in Memphis, that while they were walking into the venue, a group of people outside had yelled out, Thuggish Ruggish Busters, a reference to their hit song, Thuggish Ruggish Bone, from their debut EP, Creepin' on a Come Up, which was released in June 1994. Douglas Ruggish Busters is also the name of a diss song towards Bone Thugs and Harmony by Memphis rapper Tommy Wright III, which I'll be getting to shortly. Multiple Memphis rappers had sent disses to Bone Thugs and Harmony due to the perceived copying of their style, as well as a Vibe magazine interview in which Bone Thugs called Memphis a bunk ass town. Alongside 36 Mafia, I will be mentioning some of the others as well that had dissed Bone Thugs. In May 1995, 36 Mafia released their debut studio album, Mystic Styles. On that album is the song Live By Your Rep, in parentheses, B-O-N-E diss, which is obviously a diss to Bone Thugs, and is probably the most well-known diss track from the beef overall. It starts off with a broadcaster from Bone Magazine asking the listeners what they would do if someone was copying their ideas. Lord Infamous then comes in for the first verse with a reference to Flesh and Bone from the Bone Thugs. The song also features verses from fellow Memphis rappers Kingpin, Skinny Pimp, and Play a Fly, who were both signed to 36 Mafia's record label around the time. The song continues with their signature horrorcore sound, and in going along with the intro, they say just what they would do to the people copying them. As you can guess, it's nothing friendly to say the least. For the last verse of the song, Lord Infamous returns for some quick direct shots at Bone with the following lines. See, we can't tolerate no nigga that is lazy broke out the blender and I made some crazy gravy. It's easy, and when it was time to get busy, don't break. You can wish, but you can't escape, because we crave dead flesh. So yeah, if the title and intro didn't give it away who they were dissing, this last verse sure did. Later on, in November 1995, 3-6 Mafia released their debut EP titled After This Track, which featured some other songs with lines aimed at Bone Thugs as well. One such song is Slippin', performed by Koopsenica. Also the track, be a Witness, performed by the group Killer Clan Clays, contains disses towards Bone Thugs. Specifically, in the second verse with the line, This ain't the first of the month and we breaking bones, which is a reference to First of the Month from their East 1999 Eternal album. Then in 1996, Tommy Wright III released the album On The Run, which features the song Thuggish Ruggish Busters, which I mentioned previously, aimed at Bone Thugs. This is the other of the most notable diss tracks that came from Memphis aimed at Bone Thugs as well as one of my favorite tracks from the beef. The title of course is a reference to Bone Thugs song, Thuggish Ruggish Bone, and the chorus is sampled from the song Lay It Down by Koopsenica featuring Kingpin, Skinny Pimp, and Lord Infamous, which also took a shot at Bone Thugs as well. The intro of the song is a sample from the intro of Thuggish Ruggish Busters. This song takes many direct shots at Bone Thugs as well as Easy e who had signed them to his record label, Ruthless Records. The first verse mentions the Vibe magazine article where they diss Memphis 
and ends with one of the most vicious lines I've heard in this beef by Tommy directly telling Bone Thugs that he hopes they contract AIDS and die just like Eazy -E did. It's quite brutal, especially at this time as it would most likely be something that hit Bone hard as for years after his death they would praise Eazy for his contributions to the career and claim that his death was a conspiracy. The third verse however hits quite directly as well and solidifies it as one of the hardest diss tracks of the beat. Like Lord Infamous did on Live By Your Rep, Wright does more wordplay with their names, including the B-O-N-E namesake that they all use. Even more Memphis rappers took aim at Bone Thugs and Harmony due to their perceived style jacking and the Vibe magazine article. One artist being Lil Jin who released a song So High featuring Kingpin Skinny Pimp, DJ Paul, Lord Infamous, and Carmike. On Skinny's verse he has the line, and I hate Bone, Thuggish Ruggish Busters, which is the line that was later used for the title and chorus of Thuggish Ruggish Busters by Tommy Wright III, and also around this time Kingpin Skinny Pimp would release the album King of the Players Ball which features the track Let's Start a Riot, which also took some shots at Bone Thugs in response to that Vibe magazine article. Sometimes I ask myself, all this beef over who started rapping a certain way first? Anyways though, the beef continued on with at least a few more tracks. One of them being the song Hoes in Harmony by the Memphis rap group 10 Wanted Men which includes Tommy Wright III. This track once again comes directly at Bone Thugs as you can probably tell from the title. The various members of the group this Bone for the mentioning of Memphis and negative light in that same Vibe magazine article. The song starts off with them harmonizing the chorus as Bone Thugs are known to do in their music and calling them a style stealer and addressing their Memphis hate. Every verse is a vicious verbal lashing against the group and makes numerous references to their songs like their hit single First of the Month and songs like Mr. Bill Collector and Mr. Ouija or the streets they're from like East 99 and St. Clair. Another Tennessee rapper, Playa G, dissed Bone Thugs as well on the song F The Trunk from his album Pimp-ish for allegedly copying their style. At the same time other artists were also dissing Bone Thugs, specifically Chicago groups Do or Die and Crucial Conflict, as well as Twista. On their third studio album, The Art of War, which was a double diss released in July 1997, they responded back to all of these artists who were dissing them and were considered to be style buyers. A great title for an album dissing on your enemies, am I right? Disc 1 is titled World War 1 and Disc 2, World War 2. One track in particular that took numerous shots at their enemies was All Original. It's pretty self-explanatory but the song is a diss to anyone who thinks that Bone Thugs is copying their style. In a Vlad TV interview, Crazy Bone would mention this song in particular and then recite the lines from his verse especially aimed at them and mention that this album was basically their response to all the disses towards them. Other songs on the album like Look Into My Eyes which was also on the Batman and Robin soundtrack took multiple shots at everyone coming at them. Also the video as well for that song takes a shot at people who were copying their style, essentially trying to be like them. Another song where shots were thrown was You Ain't Bone from the same album. Each member of the song this is copycats like the beginning of Busy Bones verse with the lines. I'm sending a message to warn you imposters all hating my business when I see you I'ma drop you. And the song goes on and each Bone member also this is copycatters. The whole album in general is a diss to anyone that had come at them recently. It's not really aimed at one person or a group in particular but generally a response to all of the groups and individuals that had beef with them. Also on the song Notorious Thugs from the Life After Death album which was released in March 1997 shortly after Biggie's death, Busy Bone makes reference to 3-6 Mafia allegedly with the line, triple six rivals spitting fire, apparently a reference to their beef. Not long after this, the beef between Bone Thugs and 3-6 Mafia in particular would be squashed as according to an interview by Crazy Bone, he was signed as a solo artist at Loud Records which is also the same record label 3-6 Mafia was signed to as well and they were put on a conference call and Juicy J and himself were able to talk things out and put the beef behind them to rather focus on getting money. They then would wind up collaborating on multiple songs over the years, namely on Crazy Bone's debut solo album Thug Mentality 1999 released in April 1999. Gangsta Boo was featured on the song We Starvin and then on Project Pat, Juicy J's older brother's debut studio album Getty Green also released in 1999. Crazy Bone was featured on the track Up There. Gangsta Boo also appeared on Crazy Bone's Leaves of Legends album on the track This Flight. Not everyone in Memphis had let things go yet however, as Kingpin Skinny Pimp who had dissed Bone Thugs on the 3-6 Mafia song Live By Your Rep as well as his own song Let's Start A Riot would diss them yet again on his album 2000 Rap Dope Game on the title track featuring Koopsanicka. 
Over the years, various members of the two groups would have issues amongst themselves and cause the lineup to change. Busy Bone in particular for Bone Thugs and Harmony had no longer been in the group at times due to personal or financial issues and Flesh and Bone would be in and out of prison causing him to no longer be making music with the group as well. In 3-6 Mafia, both members Lord Infamous and Coops the Nickel would unfortunately pass away. Lord Infamous from a heart attack in 2013 and Coops the Nickel had a stroke and brain aneurysm in 2015. Since then, members of the groups have been on songs together and the beef has largely settled down. In April of 2020, DJ Paul and Crazy Bone were supposed to have an IG Live battle to represent their respective groups, but according to an interview by DJ Paul, it was abruptly cancelled on the scheduled day shortly before it was supposed to start because Swiss Beats, one of the co-founders of Versus, called Crazy Bone and told him that they would do the event on Versus instead, so Crazy backed out of it despite Paul still wanting to do it. This led up to the December 2nd versus battle between Bone Thugs and Harmony and 3-6 Mafia. Both sides had multiple guests come out to perform like Lil Wayne, Lil Jon, and Lil Flip as well as frequent collaborators Project Pat and Lil Chat as well as Lil Easy E, one of Easy E's sons, to perform his verse from the song For The Love Money. A few songs into the verses, a scuffle broke out briefly between the two groups and the event had to be paused. While performing the song Buddha Lovers, DJ Paul and Gangsta Boo were slow dancing to the song and that apparently had prompted Busy Bone to call them out after they were done, calling them ugly and claiming that they're mocking him. Juicy J responded with the good old SMD, which then prompted Busy to throw water on him and then the infamous fight occurred. Both groups and their entourages had rushed each other and a few punches were thrown. This caused the live broadcast to be temporarily paused much to the dismay of any viewers like myself who weren't at the venue live to see what happened afterwards. Once it returned, they continued the verses without Busy Bone present. He however did join again after a little while and apologies were made and things continued on peacefully. Since the verses battle, multiple publications and shows have interviewed the various members of the groups. One such being Vlad TV, who interviewed Gangsta Boo, Crunchy Black, Le Chat, and Crazy Bone all individually, getting their views on the verses and the incident that occurred. The fight, albeit brief, was one of the highlights of the verses for many. Also, it was something that was bound to happen, as according to DJ Paul, Busy Bone had been posting on social media, alluding to problems already in the time leading up to the event. Ultimately, the beef is something that both sides seem to have come to the conclusion that it was mostly a misunderstanding and not over anything severe. Competition in hip-hop is common and unfortunately so is believing that someone copied your style. Both groups, as well as the individual members, have gone on to make numerous albums and have contributed much to this culture that we call hip-hop, and for that, we thank them. That's it for this episode of the Rap Beef series. What do you think about this beef? Which group is your favorite? What are your favorite songs by them? Head to the comment section below and let me know and remember to click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.